Hey, this is Drew with Make It Better, and you want to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Check it out. So I don't know where you got yours, why you have yours, but somehow you've come to a place where you want to learn how you can actually solve this thing. As soon as lockdown started, my wife picked up a Rubik's Cube, brought it home for my son to use. He's only six, so he did not happen to use it very well, but I was thoroughly intrigued and challenged and thought this is a good opportunity to learn how to actually solve a Rubik's Cube. What I did was went on YouTube, watched a few videos, took a few notes. I've compiled something that I found to be very helpful when learning how to solve the Rubik's Cube. We're gonna go through seven steps uh, that will help you to solve the Rubik's Cube in under five minutes. Easy as. All right, check it out. Okay, friends, this is the deal. We're going to talk first about different directions, and this will help us to be able to navigate the Rubik's Cube, how to orient it, and so on, and so forth. So. When we talk about the Rubik's Cube, we have left, up, right, front, and down. So those will be the things that we use to talk about different directions. So if we say right, up, left, front, or down. We'll know what we're talking about. What we're going to do, just for kicks, we're going to um, we're going to solve the white side all together. That'll help us kind of keep things in order. So our first step, obviously, in doing a Rubik's cube, is uh, to get it nice and mixed up. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Okay friends, you should have a thoroughly mixed up and messed up Rubik's Cube. You can spend as much or as little time mixing up as you'd like. These seven steps will still bring it back into the proper order when it's all said and done. To begin with, we're going to make sure that the white dot on the middle is on top. The way that a Rubik's Cube is assembled is the center dot on each side is going to determine what all of the corresponding colors around that dot will be. So the red dot in the middle is the red side, white dot in the middle is the white side, green, green side, so on and so forth. Our very first step here is going to be to uh, make a white cross. We're going to take this as the white side. We're going to make a cross pattern on top. And we're going to have so this is the green side, correct? So it's going to go green, green, white. This is the red side. This will go red, red, white. Blue, blue, white. Orange, orange, white. Um, so our, our first step is going to be to line up something like this. We've got the white on the bottom. That's the easiest thing to do is put your white side on the bottom that has the red piece attached to it. I'm going to put that in the red center and we're going to twist that all the way around and we have our first thing lined up so we got red red white and we're gonna look and find the next one so we got an orange here orange orange white blue here bring it over to the blue side blue blue white and the green one right here bring it over to the green side just like that we've got a nice white cross in the middle orange orange white blue blue white red red white green green white that is step number one Step number two is going to be to make these four pieces white. And in order to do this, there's a little pattern that you're going to learn. An algorithm is the fancy way of saying it. And that is to do right inverted, down inverted, right down. So anytime I say right, or anytime I say inverted, it's moving the piece counterclockwise. So if I were to say right, it'd be clockwise um, one quarter turn if I say uh, right inverted it's counterclockwise 
one quarter turn. So that'll be the case for all the instructions. So the top, if I say, or the, uh, the, the top part, if I say up, that'd be a quarter turn clockwise. If I say up inverted, quarter turn counterclockwise. As long as you got blue, blue, orange, orange, white, going up here, and we do right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down, right inverted, down inverted, right down. And there we go. Lovely, last one, already in place, right inverted, down inverted, right down. Just like that. Okay, so that was step number two. We now have a completely white side, and we have two, well, we have one row completely put together matching the corresponding pieces and our next step will be to fill in all these sides so that all of these first bottom rows fit the way they're supposed to. We're going to learn together another algorithm which is just a sequence of movements. So this will make a difference if you're putting a piece to the right hand side or to the left hand side matches here. So you want to line up the matching color above the center piece. And because we have yellow on top here, you're gonna pick a piece that has no yellow. Okay, so this has no yellow. And we line up the red piece with the red piece. And we can look and see that if it had a blue there, it would go over to this side, but it has a green, so it goes to the green side. So in order to move this one over here, we're gonna do this other algorithm of up, right, up inverted, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted, up, front. I know it sounds like a lot to learn. We'll go through it slowly. Um, and you can always just watch this over again and look at the graphic, uh, the little diagram that I left for you. All right, so if we have a piece like this, we wanna bring the blue over here and oh the blue over here and the orange over here then we're going to do up inverted left inverted up left up front up inverted front inverted and that looks like this once you memorize it it doesn't seem nearly as complicated as it sounds remember that so up inverted left inverted up left okay up front up inverted, front inverted. And that is where it belongs then, okay? So if we bring this over here, we'll look and see where we need to put that. We need to put it over on this side. So we're gonna do up inverted, left inverted, up left, up front, up inverted, front inverted. And you can see we're making sweet progress. Now you run into a piece like this quite frequently run to a piece like this where the piece that you want is here but it's mixed around all you have to do is pop it out by putting either this piece here or this piece here using whichever algorithm you want to that'll knock that puppy out somewhere up here and then you'll just rotate around put it in top so we're gonna do the um, up right up inverted right inverted up inverted front inverted up front and you can see that that piece got knocked up to the top do the same algorithm put it back in there up right up inverted right inverted up inverted front inverted up front and look at that you have just successfully solved the first two steps so we made the cross we made the top white uh, step number three, we got these all solved. Step number four is going to be um, <clears throat> making a yellow cross, making a cross on top here. In order to do this, uh, we're going to learn another pattern. And that pattern is front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted front inverted and the way that looks um, well first off we're, what we're going to look for is this yellow kind of shape 
uh, to form, but going this other way. So if we don't see that, that's fine. Um, or we look for a, a white or a yellow band in the middle. So we want either these three or kind of this shape like that of yellow. I'll just go through this a few times. You can see different options of what it might look like. But we do fri front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. And you can see we've got a yellow cross in the middle. Now front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted. This is the shape that you're trying to get. So once you get this shape, you, and if there's not a single shape that looks like this up on top, you just keep on doing that same algorithm until this shape appears. Okay, and once this shape appears, you're gonna orient your Rubik's Cube so it is like this, okay? Once you have it this way, you're gonna do that front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front, inverted, and you see that yellow row in the middle. Once again, you're gonna have it facing you like this. This yellow piece does not matter at all. It's just these three pieces that you're looking for. And you do the front, right, up, right inverted, up inverted, front inverted, and that yellow cross appears again. Congratulations, you've just completed a next step. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going for <clears throat> is we're going to make all of these middle parts match the way they're supposed to. So this will be red, blue, green, and orange. The way we do this is through another set of pattern. And the pattern that we're using is right, up, right inverted, up, right, up, up, right inverted. And the way that looks, you're gonna do that one or two times. If we don't have, um, any pieces that match which is unusual then you're gonna just do that pattern once and you're gonna see that you're either gonna have like a blue and a green matching or you're gonna get to the point where you have two sides connected together so if you don't have two sides connected together do this pattern and then do it again when you get to this it, once you have your two sides so we have a red side and a green side. We're gonna turn it so that we have one side on the right hand side that's matching and the side in the back is also gonna be matching. And then you're gonna do that um, right, up, right inverted, up, right, up, up, right inverted. Um, and just do one more turn and then you're gonna see that all of your middle pieces of the top row are exactly where they belong. Congratulations, you just had another successful round. You're at the final steps now. Um, you're doing great. Hang in there, home stretch. Now what we're going to look at are these four top corners. This is all that we have left to solve. So we've made quite, quite a good amount of progress. What you'll see is that there's three colors, obviously on each of these cubes and <clears throat> What you're looking for is that all three colors of a corner match the other sides. It might not necessarily be in order like it is here, but even if it was uh, the three colors that matched these three sides, you'd still be good. When you have a matching uh, corner piece, you're gonna line it up so that that matching piece is in the upper right-hand side of the cube as it's facing you and you're gonna do this algorithm of up, right, up inverted, left inverted, up, right inverted, up inverted, left. And the way that looks is this up, right, up inverted, left inverted, up, right inverted, up inverted, left. And when you do that, um, you might need to do that a couple times. Once you've done that and you see that all of the colors match so even if they're not totally matched up but all three colors are here yellow side orange side green side blue side orange side yellow side and these ones are already lined up so once we have that we're going to go back to that initial algorithm that you guys learned of the right inverted down inverted right down when we do that 
you're always going to finish with that um, that down. So you're when we get to this point, you're never going to move these two pieces. You're never going to rotate the whole cube. You're going to hold this stationary and only rotate the top layer like so. Okay. And we'll do that same algorithm of right inverted, down inverted, right down. Do that a few times and look, lo and behold, you have a solved Rubik's cube. Give yourself a hand. You've done it. You maybe have had to watch through this video a few times. That's okay. Congratulations, you just solved a Rubik's Cube. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you, something fun to do while you're potentially have a lot more time on your hands than you typically would. Um, this was a fun project for me. Once I memorized the different steps, I probably really within a couple, couple of days of kind of just doing it in the evenings and whatnot. Once you memorize the steps, then it just becomes kind of something fun to do, kill some time. Um, if you beat the Rubik's Cube and you're wondering what else can I do with this? Is it just useless information? Well, maybe it is, but it's something kind of fun to do. If you want to delve into the next level of stuff with the Rubik's Cube, I'd recommend looking into getting something like this. This is a speed cube. It is a three by three cube, very much uh, like a Rubik's Cube. Well, it is but it's kind of like a higher end one. My buddy sent this to me just as a nice gift. Um, I probably wouldn't have picked one up for myself, but now that I have it, I'm just like, wow, this is incredible. So uh, what makes this unique is that there's magnets at the different corners and the action of it is very smooth and uh, yeah, very free flowing. The magnets kind of lock it into place. So if you kind of finish the Rubik's Cube and you're like, that was fun, um, and you want to extend kind of the novelty of this, a speed cube like this would be something worth checking out. Um, I'll do another video about what the speed cube is, how it's different than a Rubik's Cube, and I'll post that at some point. Whenever that's up, I'll put a link. Uh, and I think I have an unboxing video for this that I can put together as well. So there should be a link for that below. If you like this, please like, subscribe. I'll keep making more content. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking things out. Appreciate it. Cheers.